In today's video, I am doing a super simple macro project at home to take creative shots just like these. I was struggling a little bit for macro inspiration recently, but I was in Morrison's, the supermarket, and I found these lovely red flowers. They're only four quid, and I really like the textures on the petals and the um, polleny bits in the middle. Stamen, is that the right word? Something like that. And I saw them and I thought these would make for some really nice photos. So I'm keeping things super simple here. One, because I leave for a photo tour of Sky at 7 a.m. tomorrow and it's already 10 p.m. But as a result of that, I thought it'd be interesting to see how easy it can be to take some creative shots like this at home with minimal equipment. So let's actually dive in and take a look at what I've got set up here. First of all, of course, is my camera. It's my Canon R5. And th at the moment, I've got my 35mm macro on here, but I've also got my 100mm standing by. I may end up swapping between the two, depending on what I've got. The flowers couldn't be any more simple. Still in their plastic plant pot sitting on a little plate. And I've got a light off to one side here. Now this is actually a new LED light from Zion. And I'll just take this off my light stand for a moment and show you. It is an LED light, but it is very, very small, handheld in fact. And this throws out as much power as some of my actual video LED lights. So it's really great for macro because you can just hold it like this, get up close. And as you can see, it comes with this small collapsible softbox, which again is really, really good for macro. Pretty sure this has only just come out. It's called the Molus X100. I will leave a link in the description below. This is not a review of this light. I'm actually testing this for CNET, but as part of that testing, I'm actually putting it to some real use. So let's actually turn it on and start taking some photos. So I'm gonna turn this on first. It is battery operated, so I haven't had to plug it in. Please turn on. <gasps> that worked. Now I'm gonna move this light around to decide where to position it, but I'm starting off with it at a 90 degree angle to the camera and the flower. So my camera is looking down here and my light is completely off to the side over here. The reason is, is that I really wanna emphasize the lovely uh, shape and form of these petals on this flower. And I'm gonna do that by trying to enhance the shadows. So if I fired that light straight from above, there would be no shadows. So none of those nice ridges would really be that visible, but putting it off to the side means that light is cast across the petal hopefully increasing those shadows and as a result increasing those textures. So if we just have a look at this um, straight through the camera then we can see that we've definitely got some shadow going on um, underneath some of these petals and it is giving a little bit of form but I definitely think that I can do a little bit better. So as I just, in fact if I just even turn this light you can see that as we do that light hits it and as it gets brighter we start to lose some of that texture as more of those shadows fall away. But if I start to bring that, let's say a little bit lower down, if I just move this light stand down, you can see that we can really emphasize the lines on those petals in a very different way, which I think looks great. And as you can see, I've got my camera secured on the tripod. And because we've just got the flower in a pot on a plate, it's very easy just to literally move that around and decide where to place it. So I'm just gonna move it around something like here. I want the middle section of the flower to be in the shot, but I'm, I'm looking for a nice composition with the petals generally. I'm thinking maybe something like this at first. I might slightly raise the camera up, just give a little bit more room in frame. Of course, I'll need to refocus maybe something like this for now, where it's getting hit very nicely with this light coming in from the side, lovely highlights on the edges of these petals, and a lovely kiss of that light on the middle of the flower. So right now I'm quite happy where this light is. I'm gonna go up to F8. Despite this being quite a bright light, it is generally quite a dim room. So I'm gonna to have to take that down to a 15th of a second. But one of the problems I've got is that anytime I slightly move me or the camera or this table, it starts to move the flower. And so the tiniest bit of movement is gonna cause some problems for me, particularly at such a slower shutter speed. So I'm gonna to have to use the two second timer 
And hopefully what that's going to allow me to do is tap to focus and to start taking the photo. And I've got two seconds to stay incredibly still. And hopefully that'll be enough to let me take the photo that I need to. Actually, quite foolishly, I've only just remembered that, of course, I've got another big LED light so that I can film me. So I'm trying to create these lovely shadows on these petals, but I've already got a big light source um, that's going to be cancelling them out. In fact, if I just put my hand in the way here, you can see that as I block out some of that light, we do already get even more defined shadows on those petals. So what I'm going to do while we're still filming is just turn this light off. And yeah, the difference is quite noticeable there. But what I actually really like now that that lights off, we can see even more that not only have we got the edge lighting on these petals, but it's actually kind of lighting through the petals. So we've got like this lovely glow going on, which I think looks great. So I'm at F8, um, a thirteenth of a second, and I'm actually just going to tap to focus on the stamen in the middle of the flower. And I do think that's quite a nice starting shot. I'm sorry that I am now in total darkness. Just going to pop this light back on for a moment. Because the other thing that I've got is a spray bottle of water, and I'm just going to give it a little spritz on the flower just to give it some little water droplets as though we've just had a fresh rainfall. Because I think with this light coming in from the side, this quite uh, quite harsh LED light, I think it's going to catch on all those little droplets of water. They're going to turn into lovely little crystals on this flower, which I think could look amazing. So from this angle, the light I don't think really does a lot for me. But what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to swap that lens. I'm going to take off the 35. I'm going to go in much closer and find some more intimate compositions on those petals using the 100mm macro. I'm going to raise my camera up for this and then point it back down. And to be honest, straight away, the view I'm looking at is focused much more on the center of the flower and some of those petals coming off. The water droplets are very visible. So I think this is going to be a, an interesting composition. But again, I'm going to move this light. So the scene I'm looking at at the moment really focuses very much on the, um, the overlap of these lovely petals with those lovely drops of water on there. But in order for me to get the shot I want, I am going to focus stack this. Probably going to do quite a few focus stack points, in fact. So I'm going to turn on my auto focus bracketing. Um, and I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do 45 focus points. In fact, no, I'm going to do 65, which is quite a lot. But I really want to make sure that uh, the camera moves basically throughout this entire scene with its focus points. So when I blend it together, the whole image is going to be absolutely pin sharp. So I've got my autofocus point set to the closest part to the lens, which is this water droplet just here. So what I'm going to do now, I've still got my two second timer on, which is good because as you can see, anytime I even touch the camera, it wobbles and um, I don't want any blur in this image. So I've got that. In fact, just to help that a little bit, I'm going to take this up to ISO 200 and then I'm going to bring that shutter speed up to a 40th of a second. So again, with that autofocus on that droplet of water there, the camera is moving through those stacks. And I can see that actually it hit our furthest focus point after about 30 images. So 65, whatever I did, was far, far too many. It moves right through the scene. All of these droplets looking amazing. I love the overlap of the, the different petals here. And we've really emphasized that using this side lighting because it's really brought out that shadow um, underneath each petal. And that's really what's kind of giving that separation between each one. So I've gone really close up here and in a portrait orientation, as you can see. I really like that I've gone so close on this one 
uh, droplet of water on this petal. And we've got the lovely light coming in on the right hand side of it. It's highlighting some of the, the um, bubbles inside it. I think it's really, really cool looking. So what I'm going to do here is another focus stack because um, there's going to be a huge difference between what's in focus um, and out of focus at the background because it's going along uh, quite a long distance. So I'm going to have to go with quite a big focus stack here. I'm actually going to go with 85. I'm going to see how that goes. Again, I'm auto focusing at the closest point I can, which is right here. Two second timer. And then the camera is just going to run through all of those focus stacks. And looking at it, 85 might have been absolutely perfect. been really enjoying taking these shots and for such a, a basic flower just from a supermarket I'm getting a lot of things from this that I'm really pleased with. Just goes to show that when you've got a nice subject and you've got an easy lighting setup then all you really need to do is just keep pointing your lens at different parts of it and different shots will spring out at you. But I've been taking quite a few different things so far so what I'm going to do now is take some of these shots over into Lightroom and show you how I would piece together these focus stacks and how I would do additional edits on top. So I've brought in all of those flower shots that I've just done and as you can see there is quite a lot of them but I really like that first composition um, that we had with the lovely overlaying uh, petals. I think it's a nice balance of it being too close, uh, of it not being too close up so that we can still see sort of the whole flower but it's close up enough that we really transform these orbs into lovely crystals with that side light coming in. Um, so I had a little look and I think that our focus point starts um, on this image and we'll go back all the way to uh, this one here. And that one was this so we don't need this one, this one or this one. Uh, so that is 32 images actually that we needed of that stack. So the way I tend to do my stack is um, I've loaded all my images into Lightroom. I'll select the ones that I need just like this, right click, and before I do anything else, I will export them as DNG files. And what I'm gonna do is just do this as um, red flower stack. So now I can just go to the red flower stack folder and there all my shots will be. I'm not going to rename them, but I am going to export them as DNGs. Uh, so that preserves all of that raw image data that we want. Um, it literally just moves them from one folder into another. So that looks good. Done. That will do it pretty quickly. And now I'm going to open up Helicon Focus. And here's one I did earlier. So here's my folder with those uh, red flower DNGs that we've just done. I can just select all, open those, and it will open those into a stack in Helicon Focus. Now, most of my focus stacking work I do in Helicon because it does a much neater, more consistent job than Photoshop. Photoshop does have an auto merge tool, but I find it very, very hit and miss. Certainly, if I'm doing stacks anything over four or five layers, it does get quite confused. But these are all in. Method B, and we're going to click Render. If you've watched my focus stacking videos before, my workflow doesn't really change. Stack them up, Method B, run it, love it. So here then is our finished shot. If we zoom in, we can see that it has got lovely stacking all the way along. Everything is pin sharp from the bits in the middle, all of the... Um, all of the petals, all these water droplets, it looks great. So save, save my desktop, and then I'm just gonna re-import it back into Lightroom. So here it is, and already I really like how this shot looks. Um, there's plenty more that I'm sure we can do with it though, if we wanted to. And I am just gonna slightly increase the exposure because it is a little bit dark, somewhere around there, plus 39, but I'm gonna counter that by bringing down our shadow slider because I really wanted to maintain those shadows. We've put our light off to the side to create those shadows. We can see here that the top of this um, petal is lit, but we've got that very definite shadow underneath. And it's exactly that that's giving us that layering effect. So by bringing those shadows back down, if I just pulse that, Often in photography, we, it's very easy to just increase our shadows all the way and get that sort of HDR look. I don't want that. I want to bring them right down. 
But then the problem we've got, of course, is that now the central part of the flower is looking very dark. So we can fix that. Radial gradient. Nice and big, nice and feathered. I'm going to put that in here and I'm basically going to do the opposite thing. Bringing up those shadows and a little bit of exposure, maybe a bit of a black point as well. I don't want to go too far because again, I don't want to make it look hdr -y, but we have just brought the shadows down so much that I do need to push this bit quite far in order to bring back some of that detail. Most of the information in this image is probably going to be in the highlights because that's what's catching on all of the, the um, water droplets. Um, but certainly if I bring the highlights up a little bit here, it's going a bit too strong on the, um, on the statement in the middle. So again, I'm going to use a mask and I'm going to use a brush this time. Um, I'm going to increase the whites of this brush and increase the highlights and a little bit of clarity. And then I'm just going to paint that in on the tops of these petals, making sure I'm really getting on these water droplets. Maybe a bit more in the highlights. Just turn that off and on, off. You can see there is really bringing out more of those details on the petals, but it's not just increasing the highlights everywhere. So if you don't use these tools, I definitely recommend giving them a go because they are very powerful ways of editing. So I think that's looking good. Um, I'm going to go to our hue, saturation and luminance now because the I didn't set my white balance and we haven't yet done anything with that. I mean, I suppose I could have a little tweak with it um, at this point. Maybe bring that down, maybe warm it up ever so slightly. But most of the color work I'm probably going to try and do in HSL because obviously we've got a lot of orange as we can see. And we've got a lot of red as we can see. So we can do some wild things with our colors if we want to, which I don't because I want to keep things looking as natural um, as I can. I'm going to slightly increase that orange though just to kind of bring it back to um, a slightly warmer red. It's a little bit sort of, I don't know, um, almost purpley red in some of these. So I'm just going to increase those oranges a little bit. But also I'm going to um, back the reds downwards a little bit just to kind of counter slightly what I've done with those oranges, which it difficult to explain, but it, it to my eye that's created quite a nice balance. But remember that there's no right or wrong way to edit shots like this. It is entirely up to your taste. This is just how I like to do it. I could even try warming those reds up, but I, I, I don't want to. I just don't, just don't want to. But actually, I do like just leaving it at zero, to be honest. Yellows, what have we got in yellows? Pretty much just on the tips of those stamen. Um, I actually quite like them having a bit more of a greeny tone to them. Not all the way, but a little bit. It helps them stand out from some of the other tones in the image, which I think looks quite nice. No greens, there's probably no aquas. There may be some blues. A little bit in the highlights that you can see here. Um, I'm going to pretty much leave those right in the middle because we don't really want any particular color tone there. There's probably going to be some purples, yeah, particularly around um, uh, the stamen. Again, I might just push that slightly up because they're a little bit sort of bluey purpley, but that just helps balance it out a little bit. And same with these magentas. Actually, we've got a little bit of magenta fringing on some of the um, stamen that I don't love. So actually kind of pushing that all the way into the reds has brought the tonal balance nicely in line on these petals. So I actually do quite like that. Um, in the luminance though, if I grab those blues, I can control the highlights that we've got on these water droplets. Because if that's where the blue is, then we can make that brighter. And it really does make a difference. Look at that. Look how much all of that pops. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go right to the top with those blues. Do we have any aquas? No, we do not. But those yellows definitely can stand to go a bit brighter. And we can maybe add in some lightness to the oranges. But I'm actually going to slightly bring down a little bit less than that. Those reds and our magentas can go a little higher. So if we just turn off our HSL tool, it's made a huge difference to our image in terms of the color balance, the brightness, and as a result, the contrast in the image, but we haven't touched our contrast slider. 
This is all just done in HSL. It's a really, really powerful tool and one of my favorite ways to add like a look to an image. Speaking of looks though, this will undo what I've just done in HSL, but it's all, it's it's quite a good way of working to kind of have a look through any presets you've got and decide if there are any that you want to add because actually flicking through some of these, <gasps> these look gorgeous. Some of these, oh, I love like the fiery orange tones in the middle of that. It looks like droplets of lava or something. I love it. Um, my old my old favorite A6 raw half. That looks really really nice. You know what? Actually, that doesn't change the the balance all that much from what I've done before. So I'm going to apply that, and I'm going to just tone it down with the new, fairly new. Uh, tool Lightroom's got where you can you can adjust the intensity of a of a preset. So I think somewhere around there, I can go back to our luminance tool and kind of bring back up some of those those lightness that we that we've just done. So we're getting a bit of the best of both worlds here, the lovely color tones of that preset, but then adding in our own edits over the top just to adjust to taste. So let's have a look at that before. It's dark, it's bland, it's uh, quite lifeless. And here's what we've brought out. I really like how this looks. I think this is a cool looking shot. We could maybe look at our color grading, add in a bit of coolness to those shadows. Maybe add a bit of warmth to those highlights. Don't really wanna to go too far. Somewhere around there looks good. And the other thing I might do is just bring in I might not keep this. I'm going to see what it looks like. A linear gradient and just bring that exposure down because I've been, I positioned the light in order to glance over the petals here. So clearly it's much brighter here and it naturally falls off to shadow. So what I'm just trying to do is emphasize that fall off by just darkening down these edges in a way that really does line up with the way that the light naturally falls off. So I'm not just trying to darken where it isn't dark, I'm just trying to emphasize what's already there. I might also just grab those highlights though and increase that so it's it's not darkening the um, lovely orbs of uh, of water that we've got. We can maybe do that and just bring down our shadows. So if we just turn that one off and on, I really like what that's doing. I just think it's adding a nice bit of mood I'm actually going to do the same coming in from the other side, just darkening down more of his flower because the only part I'm really that interested in is this bit that gives the suggestion of the rest of the flower. We don't need the rest. If it's a big sort of empty patch, I'm just going to kind of hide this tool now. I can move it though. I think something like this, as though like that light is literally just glancing across this sort of middle section. I do really like how this looks, to be honest. Bring those shadows down again, bring those highlights back. Yeah, to be honest, before and after, I'm really enjoying how this looks. It's lovely and sharp all throughout, and I would probably increase that sharpness using the sharpening tool um, as well. But overall, uh, I'm pleased with uh, with this with this shot. It's it's nice and close up. It's got loads of detail, and for a four pound potted plant that I bought from a supermarket on a day when I wasn't feeling particularly inspired, I'm really chuffed with with what I've been able to do. I just think that goes to show the importance of doing these kinds of little projects at home, um, what they can do for your creativity, what they can do for your inspiration and for your motivation. Um, and I've said this before on other videos I've done like this, I've done ones with sunflowers and splashes and oils and and bubbles and things and they've all left me feeling really energized to go and take more macro shots and um so i definitely encourage uh, you to give this a go S see a nice plant in a shop or you know it's springtime maybe there's one that you can find in your garden and do exactly the same things it's easy to do this is one light one camera done so if you have found this video useful or helpful or just fun to watch then do please give it a like and please consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already and I will see you next time.